Oh gosh, I think if I think back, it was my dad's record collection, sort of always hearing music on in the house and actually always hearing different genres. And so that contrast always made me think of the differences. So he loves Latin jazz, for example. Um, so hearing, you know, the horns go in and the, and the percussion and then he'd be playing opera the next minute and you think, oh, where are the horns gone? Oh, actually they're now in this space, you know, and there's some added instruments there. And I think that sort of context, I heard reggae, of course, both my parents are from Jamaica. And I think sort of growing up, I wanted to always be a part of that and, and maybe create within that space. And then I sort of grew my own taste. I never actually saw any of this as, as a career. It was always a hobby. I, I just, I think, you know, when I then discovered like Michael Jackson, for example, and I remember wanting to run home with my, put my headphones on and hear the production and all the, the other elements that I hadn't heard in all the other music I'd heard. Um, and then, you know, you're going into pop and you're hearing sort of the lyrics and sort of being more modern and sort of of our time hearing those sort of lyrics I just I love the idea that an artist can be anything within music it brings a freedom of expression if allowed you know and and, and hopefully taught in a way that sort of offers that that space um, of course we can learn the techniques of music and we can learn about um, the past and the history of music but also I think it's very important to allow our young people to have a space to create and say what they want to say um, and actually what we're hearing now with modern day music is a mix of all those genres coming through you know the fact that Afrobeats is in the charts um, it's got bits of sort of the Fela Kuti sort of Afrobeat era but as well uh, you're hearing percussive you're hearing Latin you're hearing everything coming together and that is because um, those artists are allowed to sort of bring in all of those influences and I love that there's never a wrong answer in music and we should always treat our, our students and tell our students that that's the case. So um, I started sort of getting into broadcast and TV um, by doing some presenting on the proms and um, I remember having a meeting afterwards uh, with some of the execs and they're saying, well, what else are you working on? And I was working on a range of children's books, uh, which you will see very, very soon. And uh, they said, oh, we've got some contacts with CBBS. Would you like to have a meeting with them? And I was like, well, of course I would, yes. Uh, and then from there, sort of ideas started to, to bubble. And uh, instead of the books either becoming animation, which is my dream in the end, um, they developed this concept around me having a, a music party, if you like. It was called Yolanda's Music Party to start with and um yeah it got commissioned which is an amazing feeling and uh and ended up as Yolanda's band jam bringing artists in and just again combining all those genres of music you know <laughs> and so it really does feel like a natural progression and you know when I'm touring around the world I always make sure that I do workshops um be it in conservatoires through to primary school and just offer that idea of let's consider improvisation what have you got to say and I like that the band jam kind of mixes all of that together Oh, obviously, it was my first time being on children's TV. Uh, and so, you know, when I'm looking down the lens, I'm trying to imagine who I'm speaking to. And for the first series, I was imagining sort of our preschool children, maybe with their older siblings, just dancing along, getting involved in the songs, listening to the facts. And that is what, what the show is. But I wasn't thinking about children in classrooms. And, you know, after series one, lots of uh, teachers got um, in contact with me uh, to say, when we're using this as a resource in the classroom, it's so informative, it's really fun. Uh, you touch on a lot of the music education techniques, which was really important to me as well. Uh, so for series two, definitely, I was kind of looking down the lens thinking, this could be in the classroom, this could be anywhere. Um, and uh, I love that. And I think that's what also sort of inspired that natural progression to have a resource now. You know, we are technically quite a musical family because um, I tour with my, with my children all the time. I've got a six-year-old and a one-year-old. Um, and so when they're not in school, uh, they're always on the road with me. And my daughter, Jemima, who's going to be seven, uh, she toured with me till she was about four. Um, and so they're used to having music around. They're used to seeing me on stage. Um, but actually, I've, I've noticed that, especially for my older daughter, she has started to make up her own music, which I... I mean, the other day I, I was, so she was in her room and she asked for like a DJ kit, a DJ microphone for Christmas. And um, she was like writing her own music. And I thought, oh my goodness, I wasn't doing this at six. <laughs> you know? But actually it was a lot of her emotions and things that she was feeling. And, you know, um, after a, a class session, um, we've gone on onto the 
teams they use teams um but you know this friend wasn't speaking to this friend and how it made her feel and I was like oh god but it's lovely that she thought that she has music to express that emotion um and she she has piano lessons which is is lovely because she she loves to sort of play the piano and make up her own songs um but I think in terms of coming together as a family we put music on in the living room and we're dancing around the kitchen and you know and just everyone she's now created her own playlist and sometimes we're like Jen play something from your playlist and I think music really has continued to bring us together because as much as we're in lockdown we're at home it can be an isolating feeling um but nothing beats sort of getting together and having a good dance <laughs> I think you know you don't have to be musical to have music in your life I think that's a really important point uh, i know a lot of people a lot of parents say you know i'm not musical at all so we don't we don't really even listen to music in the house but actually if you think of a wedding your first dance or you know when you used to uh, go to parties uh, what sort of music do you like to listen to what brings you uh, in into a good mood that is great music to play at home because your your children will also see you engaging with music in a happy way and it will get them interested too um so i think and also don't be afraid to let go you know you might not be able to dance you know it might not be the best dancer but just waving your hands and feeling free is actually a really liberating feeling and um and i think if children can see their parents engaging they will do so even more because it comes naturally to them um at banjam we have 60 to 90 children in the audience and we never have to ask them to dance as soon as we start playing they start dancing in fact you have to tell them to stop moving because <laughs> we're going to start the take again you know <laughs> um so you never have to teach a, a a child to react to music but they do learn music habits from watching their parents and, and teachers and things like that so I would say to the educators to the guardians and parents just enjoy music and let your young people see you enjoying it you don't have to be musical well the album uh, has come out Yolanda's band jams um, the re reoccurring songs uh, from series one and two um, which are really nice and sort of elongated for album format, which is lovely. Um, and the resources out now, obviously things have had to change a little bit. We, we were planning to have actually done our first Banjam tour um, last year. It got moved to sort of early this year. And that's not happened. So we're hoping that at some point this year we can tour, if not next year. Um, and sort of my next thing is that live music experience. It's, it's great to be able to see it on the TV and listen on your phone, which is how people listen to music now. Uh, um, but to be able to be in the live room with the real instruments, feeling, you know, everyone else enjoying music, that electricity, there's nothing like it. And, and I think we've missed that a lot this year. So I, I can't wait to get back on the road.